What is up you guys? I am Tony Metro. Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be telling you all about the New York Mets 2020 draft class. Before I get started as usual, if you like this video, you want to see more Major League Baseball and New York Mets content, be sure to subscribe right here. Also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Anthony Metro MLB. So due to the novel coronavirus, the 2020 Major League Baseball draft was condensed to just five rounds this year. In years past, the draft was as long as 40, sometimes even 60 rounds, going as far back as the 1980s. Since there were only five rounds in this year's draft, there's no doubt how important it was for a team to hit on all of their selections. Now, the Mets actually had six picks in this year's draft because Zach Wheeler was offered a qualifying offer but opted to sign with the Philadelphia Phillies. In the first round with the number 19 pick overall, the Mets selected Pete Crow Armstrong, a prep bat from Harvard Westlake High School in Southern California. Now, if Harvard Westlake High School sounds familiar to you, that's because it's the same high school that has produced other major league talents like Lucas Giolito and Jack Flaherty. Pete Crow Armstrong, however, is a center fielder, and for what it's worth, he was rated as one of the highest prep bats in this draft class. Armstrong is only 19 years old, of course, he just finished his senior year at high school, which was shortened due to coronavirus. However, he was off to a hot start and he was building off a tremendous junior year last year as well. Carl Armstrong is not just one of the best fielding outfielders in this draft class, he's one of the best overall fielders in the entire draft class. Armstrong is predicted to be a gold glove center fielder. I mean, if you just look up a video of him on YouTube, you're going to see a few of him robbing a home run over the center field wall a la Mike Trout or Kevin Kiermaier in Baltimore. At this point, he's six foot one. He's about 180 pounds, so he's still going to have to fill out that frame, but they do project him to do that. And with that, they're hoping that he'll be able to add some power to his swing as well. Crow Armstrong has also been touted for his uncanny baseball instinct. I mean, something that, let's be honest, you just can't teach. You either have it or you don't. With the 52nd pick in the second round of the 2020 MLB draft, the New York Mets selected JT Ginn. Ginn is a right-handed pitcher coming out of Mississippi State, who actually was drafted by the Dodgers in the first round of the 2018 draft. However, he opted to go back to Mississippi State and continue college. Ginn actually required Tommy John surgery and was prepared to sit out the 2020 season, but he was coming off a very strong 2019 season. Ginn offers a mid-90s fastball along with a plus changeup and two breaking balls that are developing. I believe it's a slider and a curveball that could potentially also turn into plus or even plus plus offerings. Then later in the second round with their compensation pick from the Phillies, the Mets selected outfielder Isaiah Green. Green is another high school prep bat similar to Crow Armstrong who is going to take a little bit of time before he's ready to see the major leagues. But despite that, when you look at his video, you see him swing the bat, you see him run the bases, and you see him field the ball in the outfield, you could tell he is a ball player. He's going to take a little bit of seasoning, but give it a couple years and he could potentially become a very valuable outfielder for the New York Mets. With the 91st pick in the third round of the 2020 MLB draft, the Mets selected shortstop Anthony Walter from San Diego State University. Now, if you evaluate the draft class the way I did and you're scratching your head trying to figure out who Anthony Walter is, you're not alone. Look, let's be honest. The Mets punted on this pick. In the grand scheme of things, had this been a traditional normal draft where we had 30 to 40 rounds, you wouldn't have seen Anthony Walter picked probably even in the first 15. And why did the Mets do this, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. The Mets went after their crown jewels of this draft in the early rounds in Pete Armstrong, JT Ginn, and Isaiah Green. Now, there were question marks around all three of those players. JT Ginn was coming off Tommy John surgery, like I mentioned before, and there was a chance he was going to return to Mississippi State and play out his senior year there. And similar to Pete Crow Armstrong, Isaiah Green had an opportunity to go play college baseball and then give it another shot at the draft a few years down the line. Then there's the other side of things, where these players were going to have bonus and contract demands that simply the Mets may not have been able to meet. Now, that's not a knock on the Mets, even though their finances are always in disarray. It's actually because draft selections are slotted to earn a certain amount of money based on the round that they are selected in. So, for example, a first round pick might garner a $2 million signing bonus. The second round pick might get somewhere around $1.3 million, and the third round somewhere around $1 million, and so on. With their top three picks in the draft, Brody Van Wagenen and the Mets decided to just go for the top talent available regardless of their draft or slot value. 
Rather than picking four or five good players in this draft, the Mets selected three top tier talents in the first two rounds. They then quote unquote punted in their third and fourth rounds with Andrew Walter and Matthew Dyer. Now, I don't mean any slight to Andrew Walter or Matthew Dyer. They could definitely become very good ball players down the road. But that being said, these guys would definitely have not been picked in the third or fourth round had this been a traditional draft. And it was actually a sound strategy for the Mets. They were able to save $620,000 from Andrew Walter's contract and put that toward Pete Crow Armstrong, Isaiah Green, and JT Ginn. Now, this isn't the first time that the Mets have done a strategy like this. In fact, Brody Van Wagenen and the Mets staff employed the exact same one last year. If you remember last year, the Mets' first overall pick was Brett Beatty. Now, Beatty, of course, was going to sign for his normal slot value. He's a very talented third baseman coming out of high school. Their second pick was another high schooler, a right-handed pitcher named Josh Wolf, who again, very talented and was going to meet his slot value in the second round. However, in the third round, the Mets selected right-handed pitcher Matthew Allen, another high school prep arm who was actually projected to go in the first round. What scared off many teams from drafting Matthew Allen in the first two rounds was the idea of number one, him potentially going and playing in college, but number two, his contract and bonus demands. Despite the concerns about Allen, the Mets were able to sign all three of their top picks and they're now three of the best prospects in the Mets farm system. Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen, I gotta hand it to him, nailed it again. Just like the 2019 draft with Beatty, Wolf, and Allen, Van Wagenen was able to ensure the signings of his top three picks regardless of their slot value, bonus contract demands, or their eligibility to continue playing into college baseball. And for that, I gotta give it to him, Brody. Say what you want about the guy in terms of his trades, okay? We know some of them have been pretty bad, but the last two drafts from the Mets have been solid. Last but not least, in the fifth round with the 150th overall pick, the Mets selected right-handed pitcher from New Orleans, Eric Orce. Orce is notable for having survived cancer not once, but twice, and so it will be a storyline to follow. Hopefully, he'll be able to stay in recovery, and this will be something he'll never have to battle again. But despite all that, the guy is a talented pitcher, and I'm really excited to see him enter the farm system. With all that being said, Brody Van Wagenen did a fantastic job in this draft. So after all of that praise, I really feel I have no choice but to give Brody Van Wagenen and the Mets a big fat A on this year's draft class. Let me know what you guys think. How would you rate the Mets draft class this year in 2020? Who are you most excited for out of Pete Crow, Armstrong, Isaiah Green, and JT Ginn? And most importantly, bonus question, who's going to buy the Mets? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. I have been your host, Tony Metro.